All right, so today I'm gonna to go over the distance hack versus the speaker level hack. Uh, I have a whole series of bass hacks, and these are you know little hacks that are designed to make your home theater sound better, uh, thinking a little bit outside the box, not so much conventional wisdom. And it really does make a difference. Both of these hacks are really good, uh, but I've had some questions, and so I'm gonna go over the differences between them, because it can be a bit confusing. Before I get started, please hit the like button, subscribe, do all that stuff. It really makes a huge difference. Uh, I'm trying to produce more content and it is a bit of a challenge to get visibility on YouTube. So I appreciate your help with that. Also, as you can see, I've got a fireplace mantle here to deal with. And I know that problem vexes a lot of home theater enthusiasts. And honestly, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with it yet. I'm going to be trying different things and I'll let you know what my solution is to it. All right, so to get it right into it, uh, distance in your AVR is basically timing. The AVR makers have made it a lot easier on us by saying distance instead of millisecond delay. So instead of you sitting down and having to calculate how much delay you'd have to have for each channel to make it sound right to you, instead they label it distance. So it's basically about delay. Distance is also something that you're dealing with uh, that has to do with the speed of sound versus the speed of light. So, you know, what you're seeing versus what you hear, uh, you, what you're seeing is instant, basically, 186,000 miles per second, <laughs> which is the speed of light, or uh, basically 760 some odd miles an hour uh, for sound. So, it really matters. You know, when you see someone bouncing a basketball you know, across a field, it takes a minute for that sound to get to you relative to how you're seeing it. So that's the basis behind the distance you know, settings in your AVR. The speaker level is basically the loudness or the volume or whatever you want to call it, how many decibels is coming out of the, your speaker. It's the level, it's the loudness. And so the questions I've been getting are people asking me, hey, can I set the distance to my height speakers a little different so I can hear them better? And the short answer to that is no, you don't want to do that. And so when you run room correction and your AVR sets your speakers all at a certain distance, you probably want to keep that distance. Granted, you want to keep your room correction kind of tight, so you don't want it all across the room. I usually keep mine within a four foot circle. After room correction, all of your speakers are going to have a distance assigned to them. Now, the reason you want to add four feet to your subwoofers is because you're, you're trying to reduce the amount of interference you have uh, or cancellation from your main speakers and your subwoofer. And the thing is, bass has decay. So what you're trying to do uh, by adding four feet instead of taking away four feet is you're kind of populating your room a little bit sooner with the bass than the rest of the content because bass decays a little bit slower. And so it's about the best cohesion you can get versus taking away four feet, because then you saw the phase shift happening, which is reducing the cancellations, but it's coming at you a little bit later, and then the case sits around even longer, so it's not quite as clean as adding four feet. So that's why I'm not a big fan of changing phase. I always keep phase at zero and add four feet. If I did phase, it'd be like reducing the distance by four feet. So, or so. The whole point is, if you do that to your other speakers, what you're going to get is a big lack of cohesion. You're gonna be getting some muddy sounds. Some, uh, it's not gonna to be together. It's not gonna sound right. Uh, so you don't wanna do the distance hack to anything other than the subwoofers. So why are people asking, should I do it to my height speakers? Should I do it to my surround speakers? What the issue is, is that the speaker level hack, okay, so the speaker level basically is the volume, uh, loudness, whatever you want to call it. And what happens is uh, if you measure all of your speakers and set them all to the same decibel rating, say set them all to 75 dB, uh, and you've got some disparity in the distance, like say you've got a, a surround channel that's, you know, four feet away, and then your front channel is 12 feet away you're gonna hear that surround channel more than you hear your front channel. It's gonna wash out your front channel. And I experienced that a lot in the motorhome because I had very close, I was very close to the surrounds and the front by comparison was a lot further away. I had to reduce the, the levels of the speakers that were closer to me and increase the levels for the speakers that were furthest away. 
And so if you measured by, you know, if you took a measurement, they wouldn't be the same decibel rating, which would drive a lot of people crazy. But the thing is, it's about how does it actually sound? Not what, what does it measure? I mean, measurements are important. I'm all about measurements. But there are times that you have to let your ear override those measurements. And that's what I did is with the speakers that were really close, I reduced the volume, the level, and then the speakers that were further away, I increased the level. And what I wanted to do was to have pure cohesion in the sense that I didn't want to hear any one speaker over the other. And I didn't want any one speaker to disappear or be drowned out by the rest of the speakers. And the way I do that is I use uh, the Eagles Farewell One Tour. You want to make sure that it's in DTS Master, which you actually have to change the audio track for that Blu-ray. And you want to make sure that your AVR is actually getting and decoding that. And if you have hype channels, then it'll probably do decoding with DTS-X. Uh, I think it's Neural or something like that. Mainly because that concert Blu-ray in particular is very well mixed. And it's a great way to make sure that everything's dialed in. If you try and do it with a movie or something like that, it's, it's just not, you don't have a good reference for it. Um, but what you want to do is make sure that you don't pick out each speaker, right? You don't want to be able to pick out any one speaker and you don't want any one speaker drowned out. What you want to be able to do is pick out the sound from where it's coming from. And when, you, when you can do that, we can say, well, that sound sounds like it's coming from over there, but you're not picking out the speaker. That's when you have good cohesion. And that's when you have a good sounding, balanced home theater. Uh, when, you, when certain speakers are overwhelming, you got to do something about it. And that's the speaker level hack. The other great thing about these, you know, better formats like DTS Master, uh, Dolby True HD, Atmos, DTSX, all these things are allowing you know people that mix these tracks both for concerts and for uh, movies and things like that to place sound in between speakers. And so that's what you should be able to do when you have this all done correctly. And if you mess with the distance, it's gonna mess with that. If you change the speaker level to adjust for disparity and distance, that's gonna make it sound a lot better. Now, if, if you're, all your speakers are equidistant, so if your main listening position is exactly seven feet away from every speaker, then the speaker level hack won't apply and won't make a difference. If every speaker is within a couple of feet of each other, it's not gonna be as noticeable. But for people that have some speakers that are 12 feet away and some speakers that are you know, three feet away, it's gonna make a huge difference. And so that's what the speaker level hack's all about. So those are the differences between the distance hack and the speaker level hack and what you use them for. A lot of people have been asking about this, so I wanted to do this video. Uh, I also have a lot of other reviews to do, some that are <laughs> really overdue. Uh, I've been trying to get back into making videos again, and uh, I'm finally you know, getting into that gear again. So uh, stay tuned, definitely subscribe. Uh, and I appreciate all the likes, the comments, even the negative ones. It's all feeding the YouTube algorithm, and we have to please that algorithm. It rules our lives. Right? Sorry about the lighting as well. Uh, that's going to be fixed in the next few videos. This is just, uh, this TV is being replaced and things will be better. So I uh, appreciate you watching. Thanks so much and please subscribe.